Hey guys, Lieutenant Dan here with a quick video on my Chinese painted pieces. I have been doing a lot of customization since the BBR tourney, and this is one of them. I've been uh, working on uh, the smaller nations, um, um, painting them, and then working myself up to the onslaught of the UK, US, Japan, Germany, and so on. But uh, here's what I got. So, um, I, you know, I, I really, uh, I really enjoy, uh, having these on my table now. Um, they're, they're really fun to look at, um, uh, with all the, uh, the detailed work that I did. Um, I am by all means not a master painter, but I have, uh, taken the last couple years and really absorbed all the great, uh, techniques and, uh, suggestions by people like, uh, you know, Detroit, uh, Sire Blood, uh, G.I. Joe, The Good Captain. I mean, there's so many out there. Uh, oh yeah, the, um, and the latest one um, is uh, The Plastic Commando. Um, so I, I've taken all of their tips and tricks, whether it's uh, paint colors, techniques, uh, dry brushing versus not, and so on and so forth. And then I, in, I incorporated the best of all worlds into what you see before you. Um, some of the other pieces are on the board right now. I, I'm in the middle of the game, but this is the remaining uh, uh, pieces. So let's, uh, let's start off with uh, what I did. Um, let me just show you the pieces first. And then if you want to uh, drop off, I guess... Um, because later I'm going to talk about the paints and all that that I use, but um, let's take a look at the, uh, let's grab these. Uh, here's that, uh, I bought two Stewart tanks from HPG. Man, I just, look at the detail on this thing. So uh, I, I use the, uh, the green apple paint that uh, many have used on their pieces. And then how I got all that detail in there is I used a Army Painter uh, Quick Shade, and I'll get into that later, but, um, and then also I, I didn't wanna add too much uh, realism per se to like all of the, you know, making the pieces look, uh, let's say, uh, photorealistic, if you will, with all the colors and things like that. I didn't wanna have, have a, overload my color senses on the table. Um, I do like, uh, you know, armies to have uh, a color palette that it's easy for people to know which uh, pieces belong to which country. And so um, <clears throat> what I did was, is, is I just told myself, look, um, you know, I, I know that I'm, I wasn't a master painter. And uh, <clears throat> so I was going to limit myself on the amount of extra colors that I would put into a piece. So this... Uh, it's actually a, a Russian artillery that I got from HPG uh, from a big uh, grab bag of uh, pieces. Anyway, I thought this uh, kind of looked fitting for uh, China, but you'll notice that the tires are uh, not black. Um, I bought a, uh, a, a color called, I think it was like rubber black or rubber brown or something like that, but I bought it at a hobby store. And uh, so I, I wanted to kind of, again, limit uh, the amount of extra colors on pieces, and I just wanted to have one color. So like that tank, you know, I did the tracks, and, uh, but, you know, it just kind of brings out a little bit of detail. It's kind of neat. Um, the cavalry I didn't paint. Uh, these I got gifted from G.I. Joe uh, actually about, I don't know, a good year and a half ago or so when I first started getting into this and I, when I first met him. Um, he was very kind and, and uh, gave this to me. And uh, he had a, I guess he had, you know, he had a few extra or whatever. And uh, so I was very grateful that he did that. And I didn't paint these. I just uh, left them out the out of the box colors. And uh, I thought they, you know, that, that I thought they looked really nice. So I didn't do anything to these. I just kind of left them as is. 
Um, let's take a look at uh, the infantry. Let's, uh, grab this guy here. Um, so you can see, you know, really all the details is really just pops out. This really looks neat. It's just uh, kind of, you know, the pieces look all beat up. Um, but I uh, thought it really came out nice. And, you know, for those of you who might be new to my channel, um, I did spend uh, many, many, many weeks and uh, drilling holes and putting magnets in all my pieces. So every piece that you see uh, before you um, have a magnet in them, even the, even the horse there. Um, here's the, uh, what, the P40. Pretty neat stuff. So I'm really happy how it came out. Um, later, I'm going to be adding some decals, so uh, kind of venturing off into that world, uh, those water slide decals. Um, I will put those only on aircraft, and I won't overdo it. And uh, I might put them on the turrets of the tank, but we'll we'll see. And I'll probably put some uh, hole numbers on the uh, ships. But again, that's uh, a little bit later. All right, so those are my pieces. So what I'm gonna do now, uh, for those who wanna drop off, um, I'm going to kind of go over the, uh, the, the all the paints that I used. Um, but uh, thanks for sticking around if, uh, if you are dropping off. So um, what I did was I first uh, primed the pieces with this, I'm gonna have to put it sideways here, uh, with this uh, Rust-Oleum, um, flat gray uh, primer, okay? A lot of people use this for their German pieces. Um, once I uh, sprayed uh, sprayed it on, let me maybe back it up a little bit and get out, angle this a little bit. Then uh, once it was all covered, then I used this um, apple green um, spray paint uh, by Rust-Oleum. So, uh, and then after that, um, I would, uh, if there were, in this example, I, I bought this, uh, that rubber brown. I don't know if you can really see it, but it's definitely not black. Um, if I had something black to compare it to, but maybe this thing. You can see that, you know, there's a brown tint to it. It's pretty dark, um, you know, because the, the, the tires aren't going to be pure black, right? They're going to be in mud and they're going to be dirty and so on. So I just, uh, I just took a real small paintbrush and, did my best and uh, worked it around and, and got it to look like that. So then I let that dry. And then I uh, would uh, use this Army, it's called Army Painter Quick Shade. And I did a strong tone, um, Sire Blood and G.I. Joe and others have used that honey satin poly polyurethane. Um, you know, they would dip dip the pieces in there and then they would dab it off with um, uh, with a little bit of uh, like a, a napkin or a rag or something like that. And I mean, you know, their pieces look great. Um, I was looking at it more from a kind of a messy standpoint. Um, and I didn't want to have to deal with the dip in and, and dabbing off and all that stuff. So I had, I saw a video from the Plastic Commando. And, you know, if you don't know the Plastic Commando, go to his channel, man. He has some awesome looking pieces. And uh, he uh, showed everybody how to use that strong tone uh, quick shade to apply that weathering. And uh, you just paint it on. You just... Uh, um, actually what I, what I did, uh, per his suggestion is that I use this, <laughs> I can't, uh, it's a turpentine, it's odorless turpentine. Um, I got a new, uh, tripod. Let me maybe just move it up. Here comes the dogs. All right. So, um, let me just lift that up a little bit. And so it's just a, uh, odorless turpentine. You can get it at the hobby store. Um, and, uh, and what I would do is I would use that to thin down, uh, the the quick shade. You don't want to put this on full strength because it's going to be pretty globby. And so I would just uh, I would put some uh, of the quick shade in one of these little uh, uh, little palette uh, things, paint holders in a uh, painter's palette. 
and I would then take a eyedropper and I would uh, take some turpentine out and then I would do like, you know, I don't know, uh, for every 15 drops of paint, I would do about, I don't know, three to four uh, drops of the turpentine. After a while, you, you would know what consistency to do um, so that it, it just kind of, it just kind of paints on. And uh, then um, once it's on, I would, uh, you know, kind of clean off a little bit of the areas uh, where the quick shade was settling in and where I didn't want to have as much uh, sh shade, if you will. And I'd use a paintbrush to kind of wipe it off. And then after that, I would uh, let it dry for a good day, day and a half, uh, two days sometimes. Uh, the weather's changing, so um, it's, it's uh, changed a little bit here, so it takes a little bit longer. Um, then what I would do is I would take this, um, this Army Painter uh, Anti-Shine Matte Varnish. Um, it's kind of pricey. Um, I've only done three countries. I, I need to go buy another bottle or can. Um, it's about, oh man, it's like 16 bucks, but... Um, it's pretty awesome. Um, it uh, the, the pieces will come out really shiny after you put that. I mean, basically, it's a poly, um, you know, and uh, so it'll come out shiny. And I didn't want shiny pieces. So uh, after everything has dried, then I would just uh, line them all up and I would do just real quick spray. I wouldn't put a lot on it. And then it would uh, make the piece uh, no longer shiny and make it... Uh, basically flat, right? It's a matte, matte finish. And, but it really, uh, I don't know, just really, uh, makes everything look really nice. Um, and then that's it. I mean, it's pretty simple. I mean, it does take a long time. I mean, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie to you there. Um, you know, it takes, it takes time. And for those who have actually painted their pieces, they know, and, you know, this is a small army, uh, that you see before you. Um, there's what, probably another 15 or so pieces that you can't see that I did. Um, but you know, it does take time, but I think, uh, the reward is, is just awesome. You know, when you, when you get it all done, you're able to, uh, you know, enjoy, uh, those pieces on your table with, uh, with friends and things like that. All right, guys. Well, I hope you like this video and stay tuned for more videos on my painted pieces. Take care.